the the fun stuff is the Anunnaki, right? That's the fun one. Sure. But the Anunnaki came here and they manipulated with humans. Then you look at the Sumerian tablets and you see the images of a. Uh, the, the giant Anunnaki guy was the monkey person sitting on his lap with the tail. Have you ever seen that one? Mm -mm. You never saw that? No. Dude. It's like a 5,000-year-old tablet of this guy who is this enormous person with this beautiful, like, garb on. And he's got this person sitting on his lap, this small person with a tail. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, dude, the, have you f studied any of the ancient Sumerian tablets at all? Honestly, that stuff, I'm like saving that for a rainy day. Get into it. Yeah. Get into it because the, the whole Zechariah Sitchin version mm -hmm. of the Sumerian text is really, really interesting stuff. Is that like, no, that wouldn't be where the Nephilim come in? Yes. Yeah, it is? Yeah, yeah. That's the ver Their version of the Nephilim is the Anunnaki. The, 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 oh, okay. The, Nephilim is those from heaven to earth came. Nephilim were supposed to be giants, right? right? This is the Anunnaki. They're they're much larger than human beings, and they did something, according to the Sumerian text, as translated by Zechariah Sitchin. Okay. And this is why um, the symbol for uh, medicine was always that uh, Caduceus. Yeah, the the two serpents, right? That looks like a double helix DNA. Oh. I mean, it's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. And he, that's the connection that he makes with all this stuff. And a lot of people disagree with him. I should just point out, if you're interested in this stuff, there's a whole website called SitchinIsWrong.com, <laughs> and uh, I've I've read that too. And it's inter And I, I appreciate when people have varying opinions, right? But there's um, there's something about Sitchin's stuff that uh, is very compelling to me. And one of the big reasons is there's a lot of mysteries about the understanding that. Um, that the Sumerians had that sort of defies conventional logic. Like they had a detailed map of the solar system in, you know, 6,000 years ago in these clay tablets. So they have the sun in the center and then they have all of our planets in the proper order in the proper, not the exact size, but this one's bigger than that one. That one's bigger than this one. And it's depicted on a clay tablet. And yeah. you look at it and you look, okay, what the fuck is that? But would you, would you really need that? Well, yeah, you would. Oh, you would. Yeah, okay. you, you need a telescope. There's no other way. Like, there's no way with the human eye you're going to see Uranus. You, you don't see it. There's no way you see Pluto. You don't see them. I mean, they, okay. You're not going to see it. They saw it. You know, they, they had, like, show the, find the monkey one first. Uh, I was Did you find it? I was looking for, I'm not exactly sure what I was looking for for that one. Uh, Sumerian tablet Anunnaki with monkey person on his lap. <laughs> it's kind of what I had in, but it didn't. I wasn't getting what I thought you wanted. So, I well, I know you can find the solar system one, so find that one quick, just so I could show it to him. So, this is a giant mystery as to what what this meant and how they knew this. So, this is like in between two photos of these Anunnaki or two uh, images of these Anunnakis. So, it has the sun, and it has all of our planets, and it has all of our planets. It, not in the correct size, obviously, because Jupiter is so much larger than Earth. And, right. But in this one's bigger than that one. That one's bigger than this one. It's like like a visual representation uh, as much as you can in a, a small area like that. But some of their tablets were just absolutely fascinating. Not that. No, but how cool is that, though? I know. So these people were writing about the story of humanity, and they're writing it down on these clay tablets, and it, it seems to be some bizarre story of visitors. A lot of them have wings like that one that shows the eagle. Sure. Like, what's that all about? <laughs> Who's that fucking guy? Ra, I think. Yeah, but also wouldn't that represent some sort of a spaceship? Like something that can actually fly. If you, the only thing that you saw that could fly were birds. Right. And you were trying to represent something as something that flies, you would, you know. Yeah, didn't uh, in the Bible, or the uh, the Jewish Bible, the Talmud uh, cloud, cloud get translated to, oh no, what was it? The shield got translated to cloud with the, pil with the pillar of fire. Mm. I believe there was, that, that led the Israelites out of the desert. Wasn't it something like that? Oh, no, but that makes sense. I could have, 
I said I wasn't going to talk about anything that I wasn't sure about. <laughs> no, that's what this show's all about. <laughs> yeah, just being full of it. I could have sworn yeah. that it was like there was a – in the Bible it says the pillar of fire – and a cloud, and that's what the Israelites followed out of the desert. Mm, but it could be. I've read that the more pragmatic translation is actually shield, and it wasn't cloud. Huh. Here it is. The pillars are said to have guided the Israelites through the desert during the exodus from Egypt. The pillar of cloud provided a visible guide for the Israelites during the day, while the pillar of fire lit their way by night. Yeah, so evidently... It wasn't a cloud, but a shield. And like, what would a shield look like? Hmm. Like that, we would call that a saucer. Right. Huh. Well, then there's the Ezekiel story in the Bible, which seems very much like some sort of a UFO encounter. Like what you, the way you would describe a UFO encounter, if there's nothing that flew and you right. didn't understand what advanced technology would be if you saw it the vimanas and the ancient hindu text i mean there's just so there's many so much of it yeah there's so much of that stuff and again if life is out there everywhere in the universe it kind of makes sense that someone would visit us as we're emerging as life is becoming more and more intelligent over the course of millions and millions of years and they find this one particular animal that's very similar to what they used to be at one point in time, and they just say, eh, let's speed this along. Yeah. I think we would do that. I, I, I know we would. If we found a plant filled with monkeys, you don't think we'd take a few of them and shoot our stuff into it? Like, let's see. Let's just, that'll be fun. It might also be a feature of the universe that that's what intelligent life ultimately does, which is why we want to monkey around with these monkeys in the first place and take their heads and put them on other bodies. Yeah. So I, I think that different planets, in order to meet the requirements of life, would actually be quite similar. That's just a theory I have. Or it's, not. This is, it's a common theory. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because like, so people say like, why are aliens like carbon life forms? Like, well, that's what's, that's what works. Right. You know, right. Because they could be anything. 